This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Lenovo ThinkPad P50. Finally, I know some of you have been waiting a long time for this. We already did the ThinkPad P70, which, as you might guess, is the 17.3 inch version. This is a 15.6 inch mobile workstation available with Intel quad core i7 CPUs or Intel Xeon CPUs for those who really want best in class processor performance. NVIDIA Quadro graphics, lots of ports, obviously a big chassis. So cooling isn't really an issue here. It does not get hot. It's not really hard to upgrade either or open up. We're going to look at it now. The two kind of mobile workstations these days, the traditional big, chunky, kind of heavy ones like this ThinkPad P50 and ones like the Dell Precision, the Dell XPS 15, if you want to even include that as a more of a consumer option. This one really is geared towards CAD professionals, people who do serious number crunching, that sort of thing. It's 5.8 pounds or so. It is considered heavy by today's standards, even though that would have been thrilling a couple years ago for a 15.6 inch mobile workstation with serious horsepower inside. It's slightly over one inch thick. That's 25.9 millimeters. And it's got plenty of ports though. There are creature comforts here. It's going to run cool. It's got quad core CPUs, Intel, your core choice of a core i7 or Intel Xeon even, and quadro graphics, which are generally preferred by CAD sort of professionals, those who do rendering for a living rather than gaming, though you can play games on it, especially if you get the Quadro M2000M card that we have. And that one's about equivalent to the GTX 960M, so you can have some fun with games there. It's sturdy, it has a wonderful keyboard, and the power brick is big enough and heavy enough that you don't want to drop it on your foot. You get the idea. This is going to be your buddy on your desk more than the thing that you carry around with you everywhere. But for that, you're going to get best-in-class build quality in terms of sturdiness, upgradable parts, an actual removable battery, and a couple of different display options, and even a rarity. It supports a Wacom pen if you pick the right display option for that. Most of the ports are on the back on this one, a common move with, well, mobile workstations. So you plug in the square charging connector right there. There's our HDMI port, you can drive a 4K monitor at 30 hertz. We have the single Thunderbolt 3 slash USB-C Gen 2 port right there. Good to have that forward looking. And that can drive up to two external monitors at 60 hertz refresh, refresh rate, which is more desirable. Gigabit Ethernet right here and two USB three points. And if we turn it around, why look, more ports. Two more USB 3.0 ports, your combo mic headphone jack right there, and a mini display port. So that can drive a 4K monitor at 60 hertz as well. So you can have plenty of monitor out solutions with this, multiple monitors, not a problem. Now the other side, not too much going on here unless you're really into legacy stuff, express card slot, smart card reader right there. Okay, so the undersides, again, this is like a blast from the past. Not only do we have a massive amount of ventilation here, but we have a removable battery. You slide the latch and you pop the battery out. Do you remember those boys and girls? It's been a while since we've seen something like that. And it's a high capacity too, 90 watt hour battery here. Uh, but even better, uh, this is a little bit less extensive than the ability to open up the P70 in terms of what you can expose with the door. But we have some screws here that hold this door on. These are captive screws, which means that they will stay in the plastic cover. You won't lose them when you unscrew them all the way. So you just unscrew all the covers for this little door here. And then there's a grab point. And then there's plastic. Oh, don't we love those things. Little plastic tabs. So you're going to think that you're breaking it. You're really not. And you work your way around. And look at that, internals. We have two RAM slots right here. It's got the little protective cover. There's one, there's another. If conveniently empty, we have the 16 gig model. They put two eight gig DIMMs on the other side. Now, if you, have, if you want to get to your other two RAM slots, which you probably won't have to do since they do leave these available for upgrades, you have to take off the keyboard. That involves three screws. One right here, that's, uh, that, that screw's always exposed. The other two, you can see there's little pointers right here. No, that's actually a drain hole. This is a screw for the keyboard right here. They're, they're marked. Anyway, so you'd pop the keyboard up. That's also where you would get to the WAN module, the LTEA module, if you wanted to. But anyway, so inside here, obviously, we have our traditional docking connector, the old-fashioned type. Hard drive bay, 2.5-inch drive bay. You can get that either with a conventional spinning hard drive or an SSD 2.5-inch drive, if you want. 
M2 slot here where we have our lovely 512 gig PCIe NVMe Samsung SSD drive and another one and that's set up so if you want to have drives in RAID you can either get SATA 3 drives in RAID or PCIe SSDs in RAID configuration, RAID 0 or RAID 1, that is up to you. So there's upgrades, again kind of nice easy old fashioned accessible stuff. A little bit annoying that you have to remove the keyboard to get to the other two RAM slots and, and your wireless wide area networking module, you know, it's not the end of the world either. The keyboard as you might expect for a big thick t ThinkPad is wonderful on this. Good tactile feel, plenty of key travel right here. Backlighting, the usual FN plus spacebar turns the backlighting on. Delightful ergonomic keyboard, even less flex than the P70, smaller chassis, it helps. Not that we really felt like the P70 had too much flex. And you get the added bonus of having a number pad. Not every 15 inch laptop has that. So those of you who are buying this to do number crunching or you're entering a lot of numbers in in your CAD program, you'll enjoy that. Not really room for a big spacer between the number pad and the keyboard, but I haven't found that it was intrusive at all. And the usual multimedia control ribbon up top. And the trackpad, this is a good Synaptics ThinkPad trackpad. You've got your usual eraser stick pointer there with the dedicated hardware buttons and we have hardware buttons here including the meta button, the middle button. Very good feel, very good behavior, programmable, it is a good trackpad. Also on the keyboard deck, $70 option, the X-Rite Pantone color calibrator built in so you don't have to buy a separate USB device. I'm sure a lot of graphics professionals own one anyway and would rather use the one that they're used to, but it's handy to have for those who don't actually have access to that, don't know how to use one. And it's as simple as launching the software. It tells you to close the lid. It plays a series of beeps and lets you know when it's safe to open the lid. And we have the fingerprint scanner right here, the modern lay your finger on kind, not the slick kind that was always kind of picky. So that one works very nicely as well. So Lenovo offers three different display options. We have the high-end one, the 4K UHD 3840 by 2160 IPS display, and Lenovo claims that has 300 nits of brightness. We measured less than that. We measured it at 250. Brightness is not the super strong point here. Let's talk about the other options though. There, there's the base full HD 1920 by 1080 IPS, which Lenovo says is 300 nits. And anecdotally, we've heard that that one has pretty mediocre color gamut. And that one is a matte display. Then there's the full HD touch. So you're, you're talking touch plus Wacom AES pen support for the ThinkPad Pro pen, the, the same one that we've showed you working on some yoga models recently. So that's an unusual thing to see on a mobile workstation. Could be handy if you're trying to work with CAD drawings in a precise manner, but you're going to have to get the 1920 by 1080 Full HD touch screen to get that option. The others do not have it, including our 4K. Now our 4K model had 98% of Adobe RGB coverage. It far exceeded sRGB. So this is competitive with HP's Dream Color Display, the Dell XPS 4K UHD, in terms of having very wide color gamut, hit 93% of NTSC. Very good. Uh, contrast is pretty good thanks to a good black level. At max brightness it was 0 0.29, so that gives us a contrast ratio of 730 to 1. It would be higher if the panel were brighter. Gamma is perfect at 2.2. So it, when I look at it, I don't say, oh my God, it's the most gorgeous display I've ever seen, but it's it just kind of ipso facto good. White point is very nice on this, calibrates up very well. It, our, we use our Spider 4 Pro colorimeter to calibrate and do all the measuring, and it improved a bit on the built-in color calibrator. But overall, it's a pleasing display, and obviously no glare here, but no touch either. So performance, this thing is all about performance. It's a mobile workstation, right? This is not some thin and light little laptop you toss in your bag and then say, oh God, I wish it did something faster. In terms of CPU, this is about as fast as you're going to get. We have the high-end Intel Xeon CPU in here, which is even a little bit swifter than the Core i7. 6700 HQ and then you can get a little bit higher on the Core i7 family if you want, depending on the build that you pick with this. So with our Intel Xeon E3-1505M 2.0 GHz base clock rate, 3.5 GHz turbo boost, you can see the PC Mark 8 Home Accelerated score, which isn't actually that great a score. PC Mark 8 looks at graphics, it looks at your SSD, actually both of which are good here in your RAM. We have DD4, DDR4 RAM in here. So, you know, again, I'm not really all hot on PC Mark 8, but people do like to see what that score is. 
Geekbench 3, pure CPU information here, 3607 single core, 13,439 for the multi-core test. Very healthy results, just ever so slightly above the Core i7-6700HQ. For those of you who are thinking about saving a little bit of money, it's okay to go with that Core i7 CPU. Honestly, you're still getting lots and lots of computing power. And no matter what, you're getting that DDR4 RAM. Four DIMM slots in here, as I said. So you've got the ability to expand all the way up to 64 gigs of RAM if you wish to. Crystal Disk Mark, we do have the PCIe NVMe SSD option here, and the scores do match with us. Usual Samsung PM951 equivalent drive inside here, and those are pretty good scores. I that write score particularly is pretty nice there and here as well. Now, for those of you who are interested in 3D work, which you would be, we have the NVIDIA Quadro, Quadro M 2000M with 4 gigs of DDR5 VRAM. The base model has the Quadro M 1000M with 2 gigs of VRAM inside. And the, 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 the 2000 that we have in here is roughly equivalent to the GeForce GTX 960M for those of you who are familiar more with consumer graphics cards. Obviously, this one's gained, geared more towards CAD and professional work, but you could game with it. And the scores are pretty much similar to what we see on the GTX 980M. So, CloudGate score right there, 16,936. Well below something like, say, the GTX 970M in the consumer world, but this is also a very stable card for CAD work. So, there's a selling point for it. For our 3D Mark score, for the performance level test, 5435. On the extreme score, it scored 1859. And for Fire Strike, there's our score there, 3861. So, you know, it'll be a decent gamer on the side too, but what you really want to be doing with this is AutoCAD and all sorts of other things, but we all do like to have some fun too. So, you know, you can play today's most demanding games certainly on medium or a mix of medium and high settings too. So if you want to do a little Fallout 4 on this, it can handle it. And the nice thing about it is the chassis is big, has plenty of room for cooling, has adequate fans inside, so it's not going to sound like a vacuum cleaner when you play games. Laptop ships with one heck of a big power brick. Not super heavy, despite the way it looks. This is a 170 watt power adapter, which is a pretty high wattage adapter, honestly, for what we've got inside here. Um, <laughs> needless to say, no matter what you're doing, it's going to continue to charge while you're doing it. You're not going to run into any situation here where it's actually going to consume more power than the charger can supply. Inside we have a 90 watt hour removal battery as you saw, so wow, it's one of the few that just flip a switch and you can pop out the battery and put in a new one, which is nice. Now mobile workstations usually, good lord, you just about talk about their battery life in minutes sometimes rather than hours, and this one has been a pleasant surprise. Even with the Intel Xeon processor and the, the 4K panel, that should be big power consumer there, this thing actually has pretty good battery life. If you're using it for productivity, I'm not talking about, you know, working in AutoCAD with something with 2,000 pieces in your drawing. I'm talking about just when you have to hit the road and you're doing PowerPoint, Word, Web, all the usual stuff, streaming video. It really goes for about seven and a half hours on a charge. Granted, it does have a big battery, slightly bigger than the XPS 15s, but that's impressive. It really is. Now, you know, it's going to be a lot shorter if you are playing Fallout 4 or you are going hot and heavy in AutoCAD or the rendering program of your choice, doing Adobe Premiere Pro, that sort of thing. But it gives you a general idea. If you're, if you're doing something heavier duty, expect more like four hours on the charge. So that's the Lenovo ThinkPad P50. Literally, it's a hand fill. This is not, you know, one of those thin and light sort of machines. It's your Classic mobile workstation. It is built tough. It is built thick. So therefore it doesn't run hot Like I said plenty of room for internals and several upgrade bays all that sort of good stuff It gets the job done. It is sturdy. It's reliable fantastic keyboard on here 4k display option not bad And then there is that in-between display option where you can even use a Wacom AES digital pen with this, although the form factor might not be so inviting to the pen. For something you might be using for CAD and other precision drawing activities, it's, it's kind of a useful thing to have. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos.